everyone. In this video, we're going to see a little bit about Shotcut, which is probably the best video editing app you can install on your Chromebook. It's a Linux app, so you will have to have the Linux container activated on your Chromebook to be able to do this. In order to do that, just go to your settings and then click on Linux here. A button on the side here will say turn on, then click on next, and then put your username and the size you want. We suggest about 32 gigabytes or above. So after you finish that and the Linux terminal pops out, it will do that when it's finished installing. Then you just click on that Linux terminal and then we're going to add the following. I'll put this text in the description of the video, but for now, the only thing we're doing here is updating, upgrading, and then adding an app image so that we can actually start Shotcut each time we want to within the terminal. So we're going to have this update and install itself, and then we'll go to the next step. After we run that, we need this code here to be able to start Shotcut itself. Now, we don't want to type this in each time we jump into the terminal, so we're going to create a shortcut so this is done much easier. So to create this shortcut, first of all, we're going to type in v space dot bash rc to jump into this file so we can modify it and add our shortcut. When you open this up, you're going to click on shift g to go to the bottom. Then you're going to click on the letter i to start editing this in insert mode. And finally, you're going to add this last line that we have down here. And I'll also add this in the description. You can either copy it here with control shift c or type it in. But essentially, this will give you your shortcut. The thing you can change, if you wish, are the letters you're going to type to actually instigate this shortcut. So you can leave it like this or put in whatever letters you want so that is when you type those in and click on enter, it will actually open up shortcut each time. So we're going to leave it like this. And after you're done typing these things out, then you're going to click on escape and then you're going to type colon X to save and write that. And then we'll click on enter. Afterwards, we're going to type in the following and then click on enter to activate that short new shortcut. Now we'll type in the letters that we have finally decided to use for our shortcut here to open up this application. And then we'll click on enter. It will begin opening this up. Don't worry about everything that comes out here. That's normal and will happen every single time you start shortcut. Once that opens up, you can start working. Now you need to understand that everything that you use within shortcut has to already be in the Linux container. So you need to make sure that you go to your files folder here and you need to make sure that you move anything that you want to use video audio etc to the linux files container here so all you have to do is select what you want and then move them here by dragging them presupposing that these would be in downloads at the moment so once you drag those in the linux files they'll be saved there and shotcut will be able to actually see them within the editor so going back to shotcut all we have to do is go up here to open file in the upper left hand corner and here we can select the video and audio files that we wish to use within in the project. Here I've selected two video files and I've done this with the control button. So you select one, press down control, and then select another. As you can see, both of these are WebM videos, which is also an advantage with Shotcut, which means you don't have to transform these into MP4 before you start using them. That means that when you're recording something with Screencastify or with the future screen recorder that Google will offer in Chromebooks, you won't have to transform these things and you can drag them directly into Shotcut to start editing them. After we select these, we're going to click on open to add them here. These will be added here to the list of things that we can now use for our project. To start using these, all we have to do is drag them down here below where we're going to have our video tracks. We can do the same with the second video and drag it down here as well and put it beside the first one. Now that we have these two down here, we'll go through the essential options as fast as possible to give you a quick summary of what you can do with Shotcut. We won't cover everything and we'll look at other details in our videos, but for now, we'll just go quickly through the essentials. The first thing to keep in mind is the keyboard shortcuts. You can find these in this page here, and I will also leave this in the description. As you go down, you'll find all the keyboard shortcuts that you possibly could need for editing your video. So I highly suggest going through this page and checking out the ones you're going to need. Going back here, the basics that you can use to move around would be Alt, Left, and Right arrow will bring you to the beginning end of the track. Alt and Up, Down arrow will let you move by seconds. Using the Left, Right arrow by, by themselves will allow you to go frame by frame. S will allow you to cut something or split it. Control Z to undo something something. You can use I to cut the first part, control Z, O to cut the last part, control Z to go back. To zoom in or out, you can use the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. To create a transition, all you do is select one of the video tracks and put it above or on top of the other one here. This will produce something like this, and this in turn you can modify by going to properties.
properties here, and then changing the transition to one that you wish. You can touch the top part here to move the cursor, and then click on your space bar to begin playing. You can see there was a transition there. If we want to add text to our video, all we have to do is go down here to the three bars, click on Add Video Track. We can bring the cursor back to the beginning with the Alt left arrow. After we do that, we can go to Open Other, click on Text, put in our text here, then click on OK. After that, all we have to do is drag this down here. And then if we so wish, we can add a preset here, which could be, for example, lower third. If you want to make sure that it fades in and out, then all we have to do is go to the plus sign here in the upper left, click on Video, type Fade in the search bar here above. Once that's done, we're going to select Fade in Video, and then we'll click on the plus sign again and add another one, which would be Fade Out. We'll type in Fade and then click on Fade Out Video. With these two sets, we can now go down here, and if we leave our cursor here in the upper part of the video track, a little circle will come out, and we can drag this to modify the time that we wish for this to fade in or for this to fade out. As well, it's very important to make sure that when you have the fade in, you click on Adjust Opacity instead of Fading with Black so that this is transparent when it fades in. The same thing we have to do, clicking on Fade Out and clicking on Adjust Opacity. And with that, if we click on Play with our spacebar, this should fade in and fade out. If we want to change the color of the text, click on Text Simple, then go down here to Font, change that to Black, and then click on OK. That will resolve this. We'll use Alt Left Arrow, press the space bar, and then we can see fading in and then fading out afterwards. Then if we want to blur something in the video, just select the track, the video track again, click on the plus sign again. Remember that we're under filters here, very important, video. And here we're going to search for the following. We're going to type mask in the search bar here. And the first thing we're going to add is mask simple shape. Then we'll go back to the plus sign again, video, remember under filters, blur, we're going to click on blur box. And then finally, one more time on the plus sign, mask again, and then mask apply. This will allow us to configure what we want to do here. First, we'll click on blur box, raise these up to as high as we want. This will add a slight blur here. And then mask simple shape. And this will allow us to make it bigger and to move it around in accordance with what we want to do. To apply this to only one section of the video, remember that all you have to do here to apply certain things is to split the video track. So here we click on S, and this would divide up the video tracks. And so what you want to do essentially is to split this in little pieces to such a degree that if you only want it blurring in a certain moment during the video, then you should split this up into two tiny pieces, for example here, and then apply what we just did to one small section of the video instead of everything here. The nice thing about Shotcut here is that you can cut up the video track into pieces and you can apply anything you want just to one part instead of everything. The same thing we can do with the audio. In a similar fashion, after we've cut up the pieces and we want something louder or softer, then we just select the piece that we want, the video track that we want, and then go up here again to the plus sign. We're going to go to audio, then gain. This will give us our gain volume. And then once again, we have the possibility of raising or lower the volume for just this piece in the video track. If we want to separate the audio from the video, all we have to do is right click on the video track that we're editing and then click on what would be detach audio down here. If for some reason you don't see anything, then just simply go here right below the button where it says project. There is a very small fine line, horizontal line here. A double arrow will come out. You can press on that and drag this up and you will see the part that's here below. As you can see, all the essentials that one would need to edit a video are included here in Shotcut. Now, in order to save an export, for saving, all we have to do is go up here to the upper left, click on save. And what this will do is save a configuration file, which is actually very small. You need to make sure that the videos are not moved around in a Linux container to make sure that it respects those things each time you open up the project. So we'll give it a name here under file name and then click on save. And it's also very good to be constantly saving with the keyboard shortcut of control S to make sure you don't lose anything, especially because sometimes this may crash. And for that reason, it's important to make sure that you're constantly saving your changes so as not to lose them. Another quick point here before we do the export is if we expand this or zoom out, trying to use your trackpad to move back and forth is a little bit complicated. So the suggestion here is just simply grab the bar that's down here below and move it with your mouse so that you can easily go back and forth in what you're doing. Because trying to use a two swipe horizontal swipe here is not going to work out very well. Now that we're done with our project, we can go up here to where it says export. And here we have plenty of possibilities to change things if we so wish, especially under advanced. 
where we have various options that we can choose. We can always go back to reset if we don't like something or simply just click on export file, which is what I suggest normally without having to worry about the advanced options. We'll just click on export file to finish off the process. Clicking on export tells us that we should rename this and give it a name if we so wish, or we can leave it with the same name as the project itself. And then afterwards, all we have to do is click on save. Remembering that this will also be saved in the Linux container and you'll have to move it later on from the Linux container to your downloads folder if you want to save it to Google Drive or some other place afterwards. So here we'll just click on save. And while it's doing its process in the upper right hand corner, it will tell you what it's doing and how long it's going to take in accordance with how, how big your project is. So keep this in mind. We're not going to wait for this right now, but after it's done, a green check mark will come out here to the side indicating that you have fin it's, it's finished its process and that you can now look at it in the Linux container, which as I mentioned, would be out here. So something similar to this will come out. And then from here, you can actually open it up and see it. Or as I said, you can move it then to download so that you can later on move it somewhere else if you so wish. As you can see, Shotcut offers all the basic essential elements that one needs to edit video. If you have any other questions in regards to Shotcut, my suggestion is to actually go here to its webpage and you can start looking at the other things that they have. In the future, we'll add a few more videos about Shotcut to clear up the other little details that you might need, especially keyframing, which is another option that you can add here as well in Shotcut. So we'll see some advanced options later on in other videos. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please leave any questions or thoughts about what we saw here in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe. And if it helped, consider applauding to economically support this channel. See you in the next one. Take care.